Okay, I got a request to put a video up here about making an HDR image and doing a little bit of work in the lab color space. So Photoshop itself is an okay program to do some HDR work. It's not ideal, but it's pretty good. Uh, the new versions of Photoshop that are coming out, the CS6, I think is going to have a little bit more oomph to the HDR uh, platform. However, I would still stick with a program like HDR um, effects. Uh, or photomatics, but for now, I think uh, we'll just head down here into scripts, or rather automate, and see right here you got Merge HDR Effects Pro. That program I like a lot, specifically because it's got U-Point technology. But we're going to use the Merge to HDR Pro, which HDR Pro itself is found specifically with Photoshop. So I'm going to say let's use a folder. I've got a specific image folder that I'm going to use. So I've got three images that are all JPEGs and I'm going to hit open. Here we go. And it says choose two or more files. So I've got three in there. All three of those files have different exposures. It's going to go through those three files right now. And you can see that I can turn off an image uh, and have Let's get this to dynamically update. Oh right, I can only have two. So I need to turn one off. And see how it will update with just two images. I think that is a good starting spot. Now up here in the presets, I really like to go here first and just see what you know the saturated looks like. Let it do its thing. I know that it's working. Let's see photorealistic. How about surrealistic high contrast? It's a little too much. Oh, okay. Nope more saturated. Okay, that's looking pretty good as a starting spot. I don't want to go monochromatic. We could take a look at it, but I don't want to be there. And I don't want to be there. So I think what we're really looking at as a starting spot, let's see what surrealistic looks like. It's a little bit crazy. Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, more saturated. All right. I'm feeling like that's a good place to be. Let's look at my exposure and bring that up a bit. What I want to do is make sure I'm not blowing out the details in this spot up here. Now if I was using Merge to HDR Pro Effects or FX Pro, I could actually go in there and U-Point control those details back. Here I don't have that capability. It's a global change. But I'll show you a few tricks along the way that'll help you bring back a few details. So you can see that if I bring the shadows way up, or way down. You can see that a little bit, there's very little change. I'd like to keep the highlights in the shadows. And see if we drag the highlights all the way up, we lose some detail in the highlights. So we'll keep that kind of low, keep the highlights there. Let's look at our curve. This is where we could do a little bit of work. Let's bring up our midtones. Let's add a little more contrast. And Let's just see if we pull down our highlights, what that looks like. I think that doesn't look too good. So we'll keep all our highlights fairly high. Maybe I'll drag down the highest of the high. That's looking a little better up there in the sky. A little too gray, so we'll go about halfway of what we had there. And let me drag this down. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, so now that we've got the basic HDR image built, just click OK. Bring that into Photoshop. Let it build the image. Go full screen. So this is where it gets a little more exciting. Once we have the image in here, I'm going to go Command J and duplicate that background layer. And I'm going to go straight into Lab Color. Now, I'm not going to flatten it. And once I'm in Lab Color, I'm going to give an adjustment layer and the adjustment layer I'm going to give is for curves. Now you'll notice that I've got three different curves. I've got lightness, I've got A, and I've got B. For lightness, I'm just going to hit Auto. And if I don't like it, which I didn't, I'll just hit it again. And you can see I didn't really like what it did. You can see this darkens, this lightens the shadows. So I'm going to lighten the shadows there. Kind of bring out some of the highlights there. Let me just drag this down. Nope. Yeah, so I kind of like that where I'm getting rid of some of the blue. Now, under A, whatever I do to the left side, I do to the right. And you can see that I've 
tightened up those sides and I have to do the exact same tightening. So I only went to this one line here. Whatever I do to the left side, I do to the right. You can see that it kind of super saturates the image even more so than what we had with just a simple HDR. So let's merge that to that top layer and you can see, yeah, that looks pretty good. You can see it's pretty blue, but we'll take care of all that in a bit. Now let's head back into RGB. Don't flatten. Once we get into here, it's we have a couple choices um, in how we deal with this super saturation of color. I'm going to double click in the blank space and I'm going to use my blend diff sliders. Now you'll notice overall if I drag the slider down you can see that I get some pretty harsh shadows. So if I drag it right to here then hold my alter option key down and just pull back I can get a nice clean relatively clean transition takes out some of that harshness. Let's go to blue. You know what? Let me just go back to gray, which is my overall luminance. I'll pull that all the way back up. I'll go to blue. Drag blue down. There we go. Without affecting too much of the image. So you can, you can really drag this down quite far, actually. Hold down the Option key, and let's feather that color back. And in the sky, we could do the same thing. Feather the color back. And let's just pull this down a bit. I'm liking the way that's looking. I don't want it to be too dark in those background areas. I think that's looking pretty good. I like I like that I'm looking at the edge of the table here and I'm seeing that that blue looks pretty good. It's not too dark. I don't want to bring in too much of those shadows from underneath. So let's just see if we open up. No, we don't want to open that up too much. Maybe a little bit. Let me feather that back. Get a little bit of a transition. That's looking pretty good. I don't like that posterizing that's happening in the sky up here. So drag this down until it disappears right there. Hold down the Alt Option and feather some of the color back so it's nice and bright. Let's see, before, after, before, after. I like that. Hit OK. Alright, so now that I've got that done, what I'd like to do is I'm going to duplicate, I'm going to merge up. I like everything that I've done, so I'm going to go Shift, Alt, Command E on the Mac. On the PC, that would be Shift Control Option E. That's four keys all on the all on the left hand side there. And with this layer here, I'm going to desaturate it. Now you can go up to Image Adjustments and Desaturate, and you can see that the keyboard shortcut is Shift Option U or Shift Command U. And on the PC, just check that out and make sure you're getting it right. And I'll change that blend mode to Overlay, and look what it does. It gives a little more surreal sense to this image. And I actually really like what it's doing. So there's soft light, hard light. These are the three areas that I would live in. So you can see in overlay, we get some really nice crisp details on that table. Let's see what it looks like under hard light. Uh, a little bit less, but I mean, they're there. Uh, let me just duplicate that layer. Yeah, and you can see that kind of hardens it up just a little bit more. We lose a lot of details in those highlights. So I think I'll just delete that. We don't need that. I'll turn this off and on and you can see there are areas like in the sky here that it doesn't really add any texture to the, the work that we're doing. So what I'll do is I'll put a mask on this. Use a brush. Use a brush. Paint with black. take that opacity up to 100% and I'll just clean that up and as I go through the sky I'll bring some of that detail back. Brightens it up and make sure I'm getting all parts of this image so right over here. That's looking good. Let me go right click and go apply layer mask and I'll merge everything up onto a new layer 
And just for convenience, I'm going to get rid of that middle two layers there. Okay, so now that I've done that, we can see that we're making good progress in our image. So there's where we're at. Um, when I look at the image, I still think that I'm losing some detail here on the edge of this table that uh, I'd like to keep. So what I'm going to do, Command Zero, is I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to look at these three images right here. This one gives me the brightest part of that table, so I'm going to open that one up. F, F, drag that down, and I'm going to drag this in. Hold the Shift key and drop it in. Say, yep. And notice that it it's ever so slightly out of alignment. Check that out. Turn that on, and you can see that there's a little bit of shift. So I'll click on that top layer, hold the Shift key, and click on the layer below it. So I've got those two selected, and I'll go Edit, Auto Align Layers, and I'll let it do its own magic right there. There we go. So there is alignment. I'll worry about that little bit of edge later on. I'm not going to do any cropping or anything right now. First thing I'm going to do is hold my Alt and Option key down, and when I hit the layer mask, it disappears. So I'm going to go to my layer mask, use the brush, and paint with white, and we'll just take a look and see what this looks like. Okay, that's definitely too much. Let's just bring that down. There, I like the way that's opened up some of the shadows. It's not quite where I want it to finish, so let me duplicate this layer. And let me delete the layer mask, and you can see that if we take that image up to 100%, that still looks pretty crazy. So again, I'll hold the Alter Option key down and cover it all up, and I'll zoom in here. And with the white mask, I'll just paint out. Now it might be that I have to paint this out. And you can see that, yeah, I've gone over all these crazy edges. So I'll change my color back to black. Check this out. Click once. Hold down the Shift key and go all the way over here. Click, and it will clean up that line. And I'll just go back and forth. I'm going to hold the Shift key, and I'm going to click back and forth. So I'm still showing the table. Click once here. But I'm showing the details in the edge of that table like I wanted to. Check that out. Before, after. So that looks way better. I can actually see the detail there. And now that I think that looks pretty good, I'll go Shift, Alt, Command E, merge that all up. And again, conveniently, I'll delete those layers. Let's look at the before and after, see where we're going. That's looking good. Next one, J. I'll desaturate this layer, change the blend mode to overlay. That's a little too much. Soft light. Let's look at hard light. I like how the, the blue snow is going a little white. I appreciate that. So it's looking a little bit crunchy which is really where I want it to go with the snow. Let me turn that off. I'm losing a little too much detail. So let's go back to overlay mode. And let's pop the detail up here. No, that's too much. Down to zero. Okay, I'm going to take this all the way up. And maybe I'll bring it back to about 50%. I have a problem right in here. Let's add a layer mask use a brush, paint with black, and I want to keep the detail in here, so I'm just going to click and drag through, and you can see that that brings back some of the nice details. So we can actually, and I'll change the opacity here just for fun, about 20%, and just rub along the edge here. Okay, let's check before and after. Subtle, but effective. Let me right click, apply the layer mask. I'll merge up again, Shift, Option, Command, E. I don't need these two layers anymore, so I'll delete those. All right, 